I'm Dan Aykroyd. Psi is the Greek letter which signifies the unknown, the paranormal, things which defy logic and the rules of time, space, and matter. This is the world of Psi Factor, and the following story is inspired by such events and taken from the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. Chicago police are working extra shifts tonight following a brief power outage in the downtown core. Comet officials say the temporary blackout was due to a rare atmospheric disturbance over Lake Michigan early this morning. Hey, you've got a death wish or something? I nearly hit you. It's okay. Hey, take it easy. The wound's pretty bad. You're gonna need stitches. Relax. I'll pay for everything, even the jello. Protective gloves for everyone you two have. Why isn't he in a hospital? I tried to take him to Chicago Medical. But his skin, it's almost decomposing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take him easy. My mind. Hundred milligrams of diazepam. Hold him steady. Matt, where are you going? There's something I have to do. I can't wait. Hey, you show up with a diseased man, then just take off. What's going on? I'll be back as soon as I can. I promise. It's a rapid heart rate. Sounds like he's got some fluid in his lungs. Probably a bronchial infection due to exposure. It's pretty common among street people. Well, what about his skin? That's a new one to me. It looks like some kind of epidermal decay. Possibly an offshoot of flesh-eating disease. But we're safe if we stay protected. Can you hear me? My name is Mia. What's yours? Mm -hmm. It's okay. What is it? Three. No, this is not your typical biker ink job. It's not even etched into the skin, really. It's part of the epidermal layer. It's more like a birthmark. 883. 
What's the significance of these numbers? When I asked who he was, he pointed to it. And maybe it's that simple. A number for a name. Like in prison. Wow. Unbelievable. Seven oranges, four granola bars, 13 bananas, and three giant extra spicy falafels. His metabolism must be incredibly high. We still don't know who he is. I've called all local and state authorities. No one's looking for him. We're gonna need a full paramedic response team once we get them out and have a level two hazmat team standing by. We don't know what these people have been exposed to. How many people did you see? At least five, maybe more. All being used in some kind of experiment. Experiments for what purpose? I don't know. Maybe we're in the wrong place. This is it. There was a door. A metal door. I, I, I hot-wired its security panel. CO2 is point one. Place is as clean as a whistle. There were test subjects in metal cases. Each one had a number. I'll check the blueprints from the hospital, see if there's an annex behind here. I mean, maybe they're hiding something. We'll keep on it, Matt. What's going on here? The police told me there was some kind of an emergency. And you are? Dr. Madeline Jenica, chief of staff here. May I ask what you people are doing crawling around our basement? Where are they? I beg your pardon? There was a lab full of people being held against their will. I assure you, no such lab exists in this hospital. Who are you? We're with the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. We were just uh, investigating a potential toxic leak. Oh, really? And uh, where would this leak be originating from? Well, it looks like uh, it was a false alarm. That could be because there's nothing here to cause such an alarm. Please, next time, just call me first. I'll be very happy to show you all of our facilities. Absolutely. We apologize for the intrusion. <clears throat> I 
need to hold him still for just a second? Listen, listen to me. I'm not like the other doctors. I only want to help you. Trust us. Please. The only one who's feeling and looking like crap. 883's condition must have somehow triggered a reaction in you. Physically. And maybe even psychologically. Hey, I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. Frankenstein's Lair 2000. You know, what about Jenica? Did you, did you dig anything up on her? Dr. Jenica is one of the most respected cancer researchers in the country. She's behind all this. I'm sure of it. Why are you so fixated on her? I mean, based on what evidence? Giving you the benefit of the doubt, I did check into her background. She has received multiple high-level grants for her work. She's also the medical advisor to the Federal Task Force on Lung Cancer. Doesn't make sense. I couldn't have imagined it all. Dude. Deep breath. <sighs> Again. Let's suppose there were some hidden human test subjects somewhere. Maybe they were participating in these experiments willingly. I mean, what makes you so certain they were prisoners? Because I, uh, I told you they were terrified. <coughs> Is there fluid? A little. It might just be from an old bout of the flu. Keep an eye on it. What about my arm? I need to do a workup on your blood and skin samples. So, what are you not telling me? Matt, the fluid in your lungs has a similar placement to 883. And the scaling on your wrist could be the early stages of whatever has consumed 883's entire body. I'm gonna end up like him, aren't I? Let's not jump to conclusions, okay? Okay. I mean, the truth is we don't know what we're dealing with yet. And until we know how this condition is being transmitted, we have to keep you isolated. But I'm, I'm sorry, I just... I no, that's okay. I'll go grab my jammies. <laughs> You did the right thing, Lindsay. Any other course of action would have been contrary to common sense. And Article 712 of the OSIR Quarantine Code. I know, Anton. But I just feel awful about it. Look, the best you can do is to keep them both separated from you and the others and keep digging for answers. Something's bound to come up. Well, Peter and Claire are searching for a blood type match right now. Did you get the dermatology report? I just finished reading it. It's very puzzling. 
the lesions and rapid growth which suggest some form of virus, but without any of the typical residual toxins. I'm going to cross-reference this report with Federal Disease Control Archives. There might have been a case like this in the past. Well, keep me posted, would you? Of course. He's going to be all right, Lindsay. Don't worry. Anton, I think it would be a good idea if you came to see him. He's scared. Crunching some data on 83 skin samples. Grant. Grant. Nothing conclusive so far. Grant. What about him? We'll wake you up if there's any progress. Sleep. That's an order. Yes, ma'am. Two grande mochaccinos before I started analyzing the skin samples. I mean, I was buzzing like crazy. Somebody must have slipped me a Mickey or something. And you don't remember anything. What about before you fell asleep? Matt asked me about 883's condition. I told him he fell asleep. I went back to my computer to work. And then before you know it, you passed out. It's like a total lost time thing. It was my shift to watch them and I blew it. I'm sorry. It's all right, Mia. Let's just focus on where 883 might have gone and why he left. You got a cell match yet? No, no, it must be a rare blood type. It's taking his time. Okay, I'm gonna start a sealed environment test on 883's blood. I don't know what's bothering me more. Lack of evidence or the fact that Matt's condition is getting worse. Yeah, I know. Don't worry, he'll be pissing us off with his spidey sense again in no time. So you believe Matt? His story about his secret lab. Well, I think he saw something. You know, he's always had the flair for the melodramatic. And it's hard to tell fact from embellishment. I know. I want to believe him. I know, it's just... 
Eighty-three's blood. Still searching. No, look. What the hell? <clears throat> this isn't normal blood. Can we up to speed? Two separate symptoms, two separate conditions. Mucous membrane buildup causing asthma-like blockage in the windpipe and esophagus. All treatments thus far have proven ineffective. Dermatological infection, rapid lesion growth. This exact configuration could not be identified as fungal, viral, or even bacterial. I don't know what it is. I don't know how he picked it up. And it's spreading at an alarming rate. Analgesics, corticosteroids, cryotherapy. All to no effect. What about the cause? This is a sample of 883's white blood cell count. These cells are unlike any other I've seen before. They're strong, almost dominant, actively seeking viral infections to destroy. Search and destroy immune system. This is Matt's blood sample. 883 cells are merging with Matt's. His normal cell structure is no match for 883's DNA. It's only a matter of time until the change is complete and irreversible. How long? 24 hours maximum. By which time his body will most likely be completely covered in lesions. Unless his lungs give out first. <clears throat> Our first responsibility is to Locate 883 before he infects others. I'll call all the local hospitals and see if anyone matching his description has shown up. Although with this aversion to anything medical, it's a long shot. I'll call the cops. Have them put out an APB on him. If there's an encounter, tell them all to wear full protective medical gear. It's vital 883 is found alive. Not just for his sake. He's our only clue to helping Matt. Three's white cells are consuming your own. That's why we think your lungs and skin have been affected. <coughs> look, we're doing everything we can. Claire has got to look at the samples again. Re the answers in the, are in that lab. And in eight, eight, and three. Where is he? He disappeared last night. He must have slipped out. It was real. What was it? Jennifer, she was here. She took him out. That's not possible. She was here. <laughs> <laughs> blood cell regeneration, 
impressive work. It's quite groundbreaking. <laughs> I've been very lucky. Tell me, Doctor, how is your colleague, Mr. Prager? He's been placed on inactive duty, I'm afraid. He's contracted what appears to be a severe virus. We're transferring him to intensive care at our private medical facility. I'm sorry to hear that. What kind of virus? We're not certain. In fact, I was rather hoping you'd tell me. Well, I'll have to have a look at his medical chart. What are his symptoms? Rapid lesion growth, bronchial fluid blockages, complete T-cell breakdown. He's also having delusional episodes. Delusional episodes? He seems to connect you with his illness somehow. He says he saw you entering the lab and kidnapping one of our patients. <laughs> That's quite a story. And do you believe him? I believe he's desperate to find anything that will explain what's happening to him. And he blames me. Well, that's quite common in terminal illness, Doctor. Mm. Casting blame, yes. Finding a living, breathing enemy to despise. Rather than nature simply taking its course. Finally complete an analysis on the blood samples from 883 and Matt. I used a computer model to determine why someone would seemingly manufacture T cells to behave in this way. This is assuming that Matt's theory on genetic mutation is on the money. Yeah, assuming that. I determined that 883's blood is thicker. It's it's virtually impregnable. I believe that it has literally been designed down to the DNA helix for strength, resilience, and physical extremes. For what, hard labor? Or a harder climate, and it made me wonder who 883 could actually be if he was literally designed in a lab. What are you saying? I'm saying that we're not dealing with a virus or a contagion here. Somehow, Matt and 883 have the perfect genetic makeup for- Your Life on another planet. Matt, I've got some information. Exposed to his blood. What gives you the right? You can feel their pain, can't you? You're connected to them now. Enduring is not the same as yours. Any change? No. 
Can you hear me? The tests have confirmed what we suspected. The change of state is almost complete. It's only a matter of time before your T-cells are completely overwhelmed. Your immune system is almost totally shut down. As it stands now, you can barely breathe without help. I'm sorry, Mr. Prager, but there's nothing more we can do for you. I'm afraid you're going to die. Severely asthmatic, has lesions on his skin. Big, tall, ugly guy, you know, couldn't breathe. Where is Dr. Jenica right now? Doing her rounds in the ICU. Why? Should I call up and tell her you're coming? Oh, no. I'll check with the night staff. They moved him, but it doesn't say where. find it quite different in there. A lab's designed to emulate a different atmosphere. Stronger gravity, denser air. Your new blood thrives on it. I got there. You'd be dead within hours. Perhaps sooner. Am I like them now? Almost. Soon you will be. Who are they? They were once just like you and me. But for months now, they've been undergoing biological changes in order to begin a new life. To give up life as they knew it on behalf of a greater cause. <laughs> well, nothing to do with cancer research, I'm guessing. It's a vital metamorphosis. Colonizing a new world is not for the weak. Mr. Prager, we are not that evolved from the crude matter we were when life first appeared on this planet. Just think of it. Atoms, cells, energies, tossed together in a random equation. And from it springs humanity. It's no accident that such wondrous, complex life forms inhabit this planet. It's all part of a grand design begun by our original forefathers millennia ago. Forefathers? The creators of life. The gods, deities, visitors of our planet's many belief systems. Aliens created life on Earth. <laughs> Who are you, the, their agent? Actually, yes. My original ancestors were chosen to continue the miracle which our creators first set into motion. To create a new version of humanity. They will be taken to a new planet to begin a new cycle. Mr. Prager, they could use a man like you to lead them into a new Eden.
Before you start questioning my judgment, just open your minds for a minute. Now, what if he's right? It's a wall, Anton, a cement wall. Well, we've done every scan possible. All right, you see a wall. The same wall that Matt swears wasn't here 24 hours ago. Now, if he isn't delusional, and this is what he claims, then it's just an illusion. All we have to do is believe. Time has come. She's here. Dana. Lindsay, what's wrong with my dad? Is he dying? Your father's very sick. We're not sure, but take me to him. This way. No, you, you can't go. That would be like you were dead. It's a new beginning. Lena. Watching the skies look good for you.
<laughs> can I ask it? Godspeed, my friend. Matthew wanted you to have this. I, uh, I guess by the time you guys watch this, I'll be a, a gazillion light years away, give or take a few galaxies. It's funny, I, uh, I joined the team to debunk the mysteries, and now I'm going off to actually become one of those UFOs that buzzes trailer parks on hot summer nights. <laughs> but in the process of trying to spot the fake crop circle, I, uh, I found something real. I learned how to embrace life instead of fight it. I couldn't have made this decision without you guys, so, uh, so thanks for everything. Oh, uh, one last thing. <laughs> We're here for a reason, to, uh, discover, to learn more about the great mysteries that lie just beyond our grasp because inevitably they'll uh, they'll take us to the most amazing places of all bring her up Theories on the genesis of our species are as diverse as the cultures on our planet. Are we merely a freak accident of energy, neutrinos and DNA, a solitary intelligent species in a cold, dark galaxy? Many believe we will someday see thousands of worlds populated by the human race. For now, the answer to our role in the multiverse will continue to be sought. For Sci-Factor, I'm Dan Aykroyd.